I am pretty sure you all know the following problem with the Tim Holtz collage paper. You have found it, you have bought several designs of it, and then you have placed it onto different projects in your junk journals, on your cards, on your tags, wherever. And then it happens that you realize that you have fallen so much in love with this paper that you want to put it everywhere, not only to your paper craft projects, but somewhere else as well. This paper is so wonderful and so beautiful that you want to place it everywhere. <laughs> So let's find a solution for this problem and let's make a project that has nothing to do with paper crafting except that we are using the Tim Holtz paper and let's make a frame for our kitchen windows. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art. Nice to see you here today. I have told you that I have made something for my kitchen windows with the Tim Holtz collage paper and that's what I want to share with you today. Some of you have waited very long. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, I have a construction site here at the moment in my little tiny house and I had the problem that I had absolutely no time to do this project and it was very dusty here in the house so that I didn't want to ruin my project and that's the reason why I'm recording the video now and not earlier. So please excuse those circumstances but now we are doing this. So the first thing that we are going to need is Tim Holtz collage paper. So I have different uh, patterns here. So the first one is called typeset slash composer. Um, it's this one with those numbers on it. And the second design that I have is um, entomology. Hopefully I'm saying this word right. So I will link these down below in the description box if you're interested in having this uh, paper. And um, the first thing that I want to say is, if you perhaps don't know this paper, this is a really, really thin collage paper with a really, really beautiful pattern on it. Um, it has those um, yeah, images and the script that you perhaps know from the Tim Holtz stamps. So all of these images that are on this paper can also be found in his Stampers Anonymous um, cling stamp collections. And I really like this paper. It's a little bit um, transparent. Uh, so that's good for this project, what we are going to do today. Um, and th that's also, of course, a cool thing if you want um, to use that in your paper craft projects and glue that on top of a page, then you will see uh, a little bit through the paper what's underneath. The other one with these numbers here, let me show you that. That looks also really, really cool. And the cool thing about these papers is um, that they match each other really, really well. So for my project today, I would like to use both of these designs. And as you can see, if I uh, put them directly next to each other, um, you can combine them. And I really, really like that. So then the whole thing looks not so boring in the end, if that's possible. <laughs> that's something with this paper. Whew, sorry, can look boring. So the first thing that I've done is I've measured my windows. So I have measured, um, yeah, the, the outer uh, frame of the window. And then I have uh, taken some wood and I've cut that into the right length, of course, and the right height so that I have four pieces in total. And I have made this um, little angle here so that we can put that together to a whole frame in the end. So that means, <coughs> uh, sorry, this is really long. I don't know how to handle that on my small table here, but that will go like this in the end to the frame of my window. Um, I will show you that to you um, later on in the video. Here on my desk, I have nearly no chance to um, place that 
so that you can see the whole frame because this because it's too big but um this wood it's a normal wood i have um done nothing with that so here's um nothing on top no sealer no um i have also not sanded it it's really yeah i bought it and it is really um nice and smooth here on the surface if you have a wood that is uh, not that smooth then perhaps it's a good idea to sand it down a little bit or if you want to recycle an old um, frame from a painting for example that also would be possible then I would recommend to sand that a little bit if you have um, wood that you have recycled um, and there's perhaps some paint on it, then make sure that you um, sand it down and cover that up with um, uh, a coat of paint that has all the same color, color for example. Otherwise, it will look really whimsical in the end. Um, here I have those uh, little marks here from the wood. I will leave that. I will not paint it because I want to have this um, shown through in the end but you have to think about that first before you start this project in some cases perhaps if you have a dark um, frame from um, an, a painting or something like that uh, you remove the painting and you want to re reuse the frame and it's really dark then please make sure that you lighten it up with some uh, white acrylic paint or some white gesso or something like that so that the paper <clears throat> has the chance to look like this and that the paint underneath or the color underneath is not coming through too much. Otherwise, you would lose um, some of the contrast that you have in this paper here. Um, my tiny house walls are made mainly out of such a wood. So I will not paint this white because I want to have the original color of the wood looking through here a little bit and I also want to have the lines here from the wood I don't know if you can see that later on you will see that way better <clears throat> so I've decided to not paint it white but of course that's a personal preference I think um, if you leave such uh, light wood like this the result is way more cozy and way more smooth and not so you know high contrasted so first of all I'm going to measure this and I will eyeball that of course or I will not eyeball it but I will measure it with my eyes so that's what I want to say then I'm tearing the paper here so that it has the right length and before I put my glue on top of the wood I make sure that I have the right um, yeah uh, the right part of the paper here where my wood is so that I later on can cut the rest so um, for this one I would like to have the butterflies I guess here like this and I place that here and then I make sure that I have enough paper to cover the edges because I want to have the edges covered with the paper as well so we have to put that a little bit more down so that I have enough to glue that all around this edge so let me show you I make sure that it goes around um, along this short part of the wood and a tiny bit to the back so that I can glue it like this um, I think that's the most uh, securest way so I will look here oh you can't see that oh yeah I can show it to you here as well when I have found the right position, I'm looking here and I'm trying to rem remember this line here that is in the pattern of the papers. You can also do it like this and fold it a little bit so that, that you get it very straight to your wood. Um, I don't want to have my pattern diagonal or something like that so I want to have it really really straight so I make sure that I have the right position before I put any glue this paper is really thin and since you have put the glue you can't move it so well so make sure that everything is there where you want to have it Whew. and then we're going to take that off and then I'm taking <clears throat> some matte gel medium I'm using this one from Liquitex and with this um, I will cover the whole um, wood 
and glue the paper down and I use that as a sealer later on as well. Uh, if you are asking which paintbrush do I need for such a project, <coughs> I can recommend such a very, very smooth brush. You can see um, the the hair of the brush is really, really thin and it is really smooth. If I put it over my finger, so this is a little bit wet because I have cleaned it, but if you use um dry paintbrush, you know this really smooth feeling um, when you go over your skin, for example. Don't use a brush like this. Can you see that? This is really... Yeah, this has really mm, thick hair and this will give your ceiling later a really strange texture. If you go over that, um, you will leave some marks with the bristles of the brush in the gel medium and that looks really strange. And it can happen that um, when you have some light in your room where you want to put the frame, obviously you will have some light there. <laughs> then um, it can happen that it looks relatively strange um, because of the um, texture that the brush will leave on your paper after it's dry. So now I will go over this here with my paintbrush. Um, I will do that relatively quickly because I don't want this to dry too fast and gel medium is known for really short drying times so make sure that you have covered the wood um, everywhere and that you don't have any um, areas where no glue is that would be not so good otherwise the paper would not stick so well and you will have some air bubbles in the end and that's nothing that we want to have so I will just cover everything up with a relatively thin layer and when I have that I will take my paper and I will try to place that down where I want to have it Go over that with your hand immediately so that you can make sure that this goes there really really flat and um, when you go over that with your hand you will realize relatively fast that the paper is soaking the glue so I like to go over it like this and pressing it down like this and don't go over it in this direction because otherwise it could happen that your paper is tearing and of course oh, sorry and I, um, of course we don't want that but we want to have this pressed down really really well okay and now you can um, let this air dry or you can also use a heat gun to dry this. Um, I will go the faster way and take my heat gun to dry that. So I will not glue these little flaps here, but I will first um, dry this so that nothing can happen here uh, while I'm touching it. The glue is coming through the paper a little bit now. And when I touch that and I stick to the uh, surface, it can happen when I lift my hand that I tear the paper off. And of course, that's nothing that I want to have. So I will first dry this and then we will glue the rest um, of the paper. Okay, so when this is dry, it looks like this. It's such dry that I can touch it. It's not totally dry. Um, later on when it is totally dry it will get a little bit more white. Um, here the wood is uh, shown relatively extremely but um, in the end that will turn a little bit more white. Uh, but now I have the chance that I can put that like this to my table and now I can put this a little bit back so that I can reach this little um, 
area here where the shorter um, side of the wood begins so you can carefully um, uh, put that a little bit away from you so that you have the chance to put the blue the glue here and now I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before I will put some glue some of this gel medium here okay then when we have that we can turn it this way of course you can um, yeah try to find out the most uh, easiest way for yourself I found out that it is um, easier to glue that in steps than putting the glue everywhere and having the problem that it dries too fast or something like that so I like to do it in those steps and not everything at the same time but um, of course you can do that as you want it now I'm taking this very carefully giving this a little massage here on the edge <laughs> so that I can make sure that it lays really really flat on this side of the wood like this because we don't want to have any air bubbles here on this edge and yeah so we're going to do it like this and then we can turn it to the other side and just do the same here as well um, so <clears throat> now I will let that dry so um, I mean this edge here so that I can later on put it like this to my table if I would do that now it would stick to my table so I have to make sure that this edge is dry before I can go on okay so this is dry now so I will turn it the other way around and glue this part exactly like I have shown you a second ago okay so this is also dry now um, coming to the edges uh, it's a little bit tricky to get the paper around the edge that it is really nice and especially that it is not um, overlapping too much uh, because later on I want to have this of course nice and smooth fitting together the uh, single pieces of wood I mean so first I'm tearing the most of this off this of course I can use for another project for a junk journal project for example collage or whatever so that goes into my collage fodder and here now I have a few centimeters um, that are overlapping um, over this edge here and now whew, hard to show that in the camera because I have to hold that in the air now <laughs> so now I'm trying to get glue here to the paper and the edge of the wood and this time I'm putting the glue also to the paper because that way it gets a little bit soaked from the glue and it's easier to fold it around the edges but that's also a thing that I found out for myself and of course um, you can do that uh, like you want and how you feel it's the easiest way so first of all I'm trying to press that down here like this so I'm doing that like I would um, wrap a present for example with paper a little bit more glue here so that it glues on this uh, area as well and then we can flip that make sure that especially the edges here and here and also on the uh, on the other side are really good in shape and then we can press that to the back side so that we have covered this up I mean this um, 
area here. So this whole surface you will later on not see when this is on the window. The other part of the wood would be here. But we also um, want to have a nice edge here. And I want to have the paper go in here um, into this not visible area because I have cut that by myself. I mean, this is not a, yeah, a thing that uh, an expert has made. <laughs> but I have cut that and of course I want to have um, those areas as smooth as possible and also um, if you can't see this you would see if this edge is not nice and crisp so I will let this dry and do the same thing on the other side as well I mean I can do that now if I'm carefully like this we are tearing this off <clears throat> so that we have those few centimeters here as well just to cover this area up And if this is not totally covered, of course, that's not a problem, because as I said, we will not see that in the end. Okay. So now I will take this whole thing, place it here to my table, and now I will take another portion of my gel medium and I will put a thin layer on top of this as a sealer. So um, that means if um, it happens that there comes some dirt to my window or I spritz with something to this frame accidentally, then I can easily take a wet uh, towel or something like that and rub that off. So this is only um, to protect the whole thing a little bit. This layer that I'm putting here now is a little bit thicker than the layer I've used to glue the paper. And when I have applied this, I let that air dry to make sure that everything dries really, really good. And um, here, there's also the thing uh, with the paintbrush. So I'm using this very smooth paintbrush, as I said in the beginning of the video, to make sure that I don't have any harsh lines or something like that, those brush strokes. Um, I'm going over that relatively often um, and with not so much pressure so that I have a nice and equal surface on top of the paper. And when I have done that, I will continue with all of the other pieces of this frame in the same way, let everything dry and then I will show you how to put that to the window. And of course you could also do this as a frame for an artwork for example if you don't have the possibility to put that around your window of course you could use it as a normal frame for something as well you could even do that in very small size for small pieces for small canvases or something like that and I think that looks really really cool and you can also of course um, try out different looks of this. I have used oops, the same paper for a shelf that is hanging on my wall. Um, I have upcycled that um, and I have used the same paper um, and the same technique except that um, the shelf originally was brown, very dark brown and I have painted the areas where I have put the paper with um, some white chalk paint to make sure that the paper looks black and white and that this brown doesn't shine through 
but that looks also really really cool and for that I've also used some gilding wax and other um, things for distressing the areas where the paper is um, so of course you could let this dry now and then you could take some distress ink for example or some other mediums to distress the edges um, in this case I will not do that because um, this is going to be part of my kitchen and um, where I cook and where I sometimes have a little bit you know uh, splatters from something <laughs> and if I would distress the edges here um, with for example distress oxide ink um, then I would have a problem to seal it because uh, the distress oxide ink is water soluble of course and um, if I would put that here uh, with a sponge or something like that as we know that from cards or journaling pages and that stuff then I would have a problem to seal that um, uh, also when I would use uh, if I would use a spray sealer I have the problem that um, this edge looks not so nice distressed um, as yeah if I wouldn't seal it but if I wouldn't seal it I have the problem that I can't clean it so good so this way it is waterproof and I can clean it uh, with um, a wet towel very carefully of course but I can clean it um, for the shelf here in my craft room I um, didn't care about that I've used gilding wax and uh, some black distress ink and that stuff because there will come no dirt to it where I have to rub it off with a wet towel or something like that so yeah um, I will show that to you or I think uh, at this point of the video I have shown it to you um, <clears throat> so that you can see the difference and that you can of course see the options that you have with this paper and some wood <laughs> so I will let this dry and do the rest of the three of this in the same way this is one of the three windows where I would like to put my decorative frame around. This window is a little bit strange because as you can see, if you look through it, you can look into my craft area. So this is a window that has no function anymore because in this area here of my room, um, yeah, there's the new entrance and this is, um, yeah, a small entrance that is part of my new kitchen so when I turn the camera around please excuse the mess there <laughs> I'm not totally ready with this kitchen but the, here you can see the kitchen now the window is there on the right side and the other window that I want to decorate with this frame is this one here's the main entrance sorry it's really tiny here it's nearly impossible to film that and here's the third window where I already have um, attached this frame the sunlight is really really bright at the moment so you can't see that so good but I will show you the finished frame on the other both windows so that you can see that better but that's what we want to have for the other both as well so hopefully that will work um, to attach that I am using this crazy machine here so um, yeah that's like a stapler but it is really really big <laughs> as you can see and it makes incredible noises when I put that into the uh, this thing here uh, I don't know the English name <laughs> when I put it into here then it makes really really strange noises so I will not put that into the video otherwise your ears will <laughs> fall off or something like that but if you want to attach something like that then of course you need some kind of a heavy stapler or something like that and of course we need something to um yeah line that up really well here I don't know <laughs> how this is called it's Wasserwaage in uh, German I don't know the English word but you know what I mean um this we have all built by ourselves including this whole room so that means all of the walls and everything that is behind the walls the roof and everything we have built with our own hands that means we have also measured the windows by ourselves that means <laughs> that this is not totally exactly um, a rectangle the angles here might be not totally 90 degree um, so I have to 
eyeball that a little bit to bring that to the window so that it looks great in the end. The same thing here. Here we have a little problem with this little piece of wood here. As you can see, I have this little edge here. So I have to, yeah, um, in German it's improvisieren, improvisize. I don't know if that is a word. <laughs> I have to put that here so that it looks great, but I have to, yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge, I would say. So please have that in mind if you have um, some things like windows or where you put, uh, where you want to put your decoration. Um, if you have built that by yourself, then it could be that this is not a totally 90 degree angle. So be very carefully uh, while you are attaching this. And it's also helpful to have a second um, person with uh, two more hands to help you. I don't have such a person here at the moment, but I will try my best to bring that to the window now. And when I have finished it, I will show you the result. Okay, so here we go. This is window number one. That is this small window where you can see my craft room. And I really, really love how that turned out, especially with this gray color of the second part here of the wall. And also with this little wood here, it's nearly no problem because this sits on this little thing here, on this little edge now. And I really, really like how that came out. Um, I think I would like to put something here and there, perhaps in the same style, but I'm not sure until now. But if if with this Tim Holtz collage paper, then it would be a really, really small, not small, but a thin frame that I would like to use for that. But perhaps I will leave it as an eye catcher as it is and put something else on the left and the right side of this thing. Um, so as I told you, this area is still a construction site. So this is not totally finished until now. Um, and I have to decide what fits here. As you can see, here are some machines and that stuff that I still have to um, yeah, use here. So when this is all tidy and cleaned up, then here perhaps will be my water cooker. Yeah, I think probably it will be here and my toaster. Um, and yeah, so that this whole area looks a little bit more decorated and more nice than now. But I hope you can get an imagination what effect you can reach if you put such a frame around your window. And I also like the combination of the both um, designs of this paper. As you can see, here is this typewriter thingy here as well on this um left and the right side and on the bottom and on the top I have put the um, entomology paper with the butterflies and the other animals and I really like how that matches each other but it's also different and it's not so boring if you look at that it's not all the same so that's what I want to say and when we go here so I've tried to um, put my light on so that you can see that better here but it's so um, sunny outside at the moment that you nearly can't see anything here. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Perhaps like, ooh, like this. Perhaps you can see my camera is making strange things. Please stay this light. <sighs> I, I can't, I can't handle that. So hopefully you can get an imagination of how this looks now. Ah, sorry, I'm so sorry. I can't show you that better, but it has a similar look, of course, like the other window. Um, and I really, really like how this turned out. Um, here's the area where I'm sitting while I'm eating. And I really like to have this design next to um, this little place. And I will also put this pillow here so that it looks really, really cozy, even if you can't see anything. <laughs> and yeah, and when I turn around, we have this window that I have shown you before. I hope you could get an imagination of how this looks and how beautiful this is. So, Tim Holtz, if you ever see this video, <laughs> thank you so much for this paper. We really, really love that. And as you can see, you can do some really awesome things with that. Perhaps you haven't known that before, <laughs> or perhaps you haven't done that before. I think um, you should do that in your home as well, Tim. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's it from me for now, for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If yes, please leave a comment and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more uh, papercraft projects. And the next time we are going on with a junk journal project, of course. Stay healthy, stay creative. See you the next time. Bye-bye.